Madam President, I return to the floor of the Senate again today to ask that this body take immediate action, action needed to address our nation's massive baby formula shortage. For months, American moms and dads have been scouring supermarkets and drug, drug stores looking for baby formula. Anxiety-ridden parents are frantically checking online stores and pleading with family and friends, trying to figure out how to ship, purchase, and otherwise procure baby formula. Still, some families must hospitalize their babies because they can't find formula. Yes, they're hospitalizing them for that reason alone. Inexcusably, the crisis has only gotten worse. In May alone, reports show that the out-of-stock rate jumped from 43% to a staggering 73% nationally. In Utah, my state, the state with the largest families, the most children per capita, and the highest birth rate in the nation, reports show that out-of-stock rate to be as high as 88.9%. Desperate parents are now resorting to places like Facebook Marketplace, buying from unknown sellers at exorbitant markups. The failure of the Biden administration's photo op policy has not so much as put a dent, even a tiny dent, in this problem. Now, initially, the White House said that parents should, quote, ask your pediatrician who may have formula samples or possible alternatives, as if that were somehow a solution. This hollow non-response was embarrassing enough, but tragically, the administration's response has not improved with time in the time that's passed since that statement was made. When the question came up again, the White House press secretary spent nearly 20 seconds flipping through a binder only to respond with, quote, I don't have anything new, close quote. Madam President, that response is simply unacceptable. It's unacceptable for the American people generally, and especially for those families dealing with this inexplicably, needlessly prolonged crisis. By failing to act, we're leaving parents in an unimaginable situation. During the mo one of the most stressful and impactful times of life. Worse, they've received no discernible answers from their elected officials. The White House's website lays the blame solely on Abbott's plant closure in Michigan, quote, due to safety concerns from the FDA. But this is a very limited narrow line of thinking. The FDA regularly recalls other food products, but none of those recalls happens to result in shortages of this magnitude or this significance with such weighty con consequences on the youngest of Americans. Look, it doesn't have to be this way. There are a lot of weighty problems that we address in the United States Senate that are seemingly unsolvable, intractable, or at least very, very difficult to solve because they involve things that very often are beyond our ability to control. This is not one of those problems. This is within our grasp, it's within our control. In fact, government is the problem. Government caused it, and by turning certain levers, government can relieve this problem and do so in a very short period of time. This suffering is unnecessarily being prolonged by the government itself. So the Senate can help these families, these American families struggling with this crisis, by immediately passing my bill called the Formula Act. This bill responds to the crisis in three simple ways to help solve the crisis at hand and feed American babies. First, my bill would suspend tariff collection on currently allowed formula imports. We tax imported formula at a rate of at least 17.5% upon entering the United States. It can roughly double to about 35% uh, depending on the circumstances of the shipment. We can help ease the skyrocketing prices and encourage companies to import as much baby formula as possible or as much as demand within the market requires by simply suspending for a period of six months this tariff collection. Look, the administration has acknowledged there are appropriate times to suspend the collection of certain taxes. For example, it's currently proposing suspending the gasoline tax for a period of three months. Surely it's not the Biden White House's position that gasoline is more important than feeding infants. Second, my bill would temporarily 
allow formula imports from several safe countries like those in Europe. This would enable us to access plentiful formula supplies from abroad and to meet our current needs with that. Now, allowing these imports is not going to endanger American babies. The manufacturing plants in question are already approved and are already regulated by their home countries. And the only plants operate in countries and subject to authorities that are comparable to those imposed by our own Food and Drug Administration. These are countries from which we already import pharmaceutical products. The fact is that parents have already begun taking matters into their own hands, often with dire consequences. We're hearing reports of parents resorting to online, online homemade recipes for formula that they then feed to their infants. Infant hospitalizations due to malnutrition or are correspondingly increasing as a direct result of these activities and the shortages from which they stem. Doctors have voiced their concerns that homemade formulas can lead to liver and kidney issues and, in some cases, even heart failure. Some families have tried diluting the formula that they are able to access with more water, a tactic that health experts warn can lead to brain swelling and organ failure. Some doctors refer to this shortage as, quote, the worst crisis they've experienced in their careers, close quote. They have to place dehydrated children on IV fluids, which isn't, of course, a long-term solution. It's an acute and dire response to a life-threatening emergency brought about through an artificial government constraint on the market. These short-term consequences are scary enough. They're scary enough for the moms and dads to say nothing of the horrors the children, the infants experience in the process. We still don't know what the long-term effects of these might be to the babies. Those worried about the formula quality may find solace in the fact that my bill retains the FDA's authority to recall foreign formulas in the very unlikely event that these safety issues arise. Remember, these are formulas produced in facilities in countries from which we already import pharmaceutical products based on our country's trust and confidence that their, their safety and quality standards are as secure as, if not more stringent than, our own. Additionally, my bill only calls for importing formula that's lawfully marketed and approved in select foreign countries. Again, private citizens are already doing this. The law already allows the personal importation of baby formula, meaning somebody can jump online and order it on their own. And parents are voluntarily choosing to do so because they've done the research and they trust that it's safe for their baby. They understand, as we do, that babies in France, in Switzerland, and in the United Kingdom are not different than babies in the United States of America. Formula that works for them, it's safe and healthy for them, it has proven safe and healthy and effective for them for many, many decades, is also going to work with respect to American babies. My bill would just make this easier and more affordable for parents. You see, because to be one of those parents, you've got to have a degree of sophistication to know what you're looking for. Most people uh, aren't really aware of the fact that they could jump online and order this. Secondly, it's really expensive to do it. They can't buy in bulk, and it requires extra shipping and handling costs that makes this prohibitively ex expensive for many people, even the lucky ones who become aware that it's even an option. So my bill isn't making something legal that's currently illegal in that respect. It's simply making it more affordable. It's making it so that we no longer limit access to these foreign formulas, foreign top quality formulas from places like France and Switzerland and the United Kingdom. So that they'll be available to poor and middle class families and not just to the wealthy. Finally, my bill would allow WIC program recipients to buy whatever brand of formula is available with WIC vouchers. My bill will allow these parents to buy from available stock and feed their children and guarantees greater flexibility. You see, the existing formula crisis has been exacerbated by virtue of the fact that uh, the WIC formula, uh, the, the WIC beneficiaries are given a voucher. Very often, that voucher limits them to procuring only that brand of formula specified on the voucher itself, which in many instances might be out of stock. This would eliminate that problem. 
Madam President, keeping American infants fed should be one of the least controversial proposals imaginable, especially because this is something we can be done easily. We can bring about almost immediate relief to these American parents and especially to their babies just by not causing the problem anymore, or at least waiting for a few months before causing this problem again. In the meantime, the hope and the expectation is that the American formula industry can retool, revamp, and get back uh, in, in the practice of producing in sufficient quantities that they'll be able to meet with demand. But we need six months in order to do that. American babies are going hungry, and the federal government is the problem. The federal government is causing these babies to starve and otherwise suffer. My Formula Act will help solve the formula crisis and ensure that American babies do not go unfed. Look, there is a reason why we see this crisis here, but not in any of our neighbor, neighbor countries, not in any of our peer countries. No, the crisis exists here because this is a feature of U.S. law. We can fix this problem. We can help solve this crisis today. We can make sure American babies' cries do not go unanswered. We can and must pass my Formula Act. And so, Madam President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of calendar number 372S4261, that the bill be considered read a third time and passed, and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Madam President. The Senator from Pennsylvania. Madam President, I rise to object to the Senator from Utah's request. I understand his concern and the concern of people in both parties both sides of the aisle here in the Senate, to take action on this infant formula challenge that so many families are suffering through right now. The unfortunate part about this proposal is this will put babies at risk in ways that we don't even fully understand right now. There's bipartisan concern, um, and the evidence for that is the action of uh, committees, bipartisan work in in several committees, including the Agriculture Committee as well as the, the um, Health, Education, Labor, Pensions Committee, bipartisan work to meet uh, this crisis. And the focus of that work has been to get formula on shelves as soon as possible. Madam President, it's important to remember how our nation's formula crisis began. Abbott's recall, the manufacturer, the recall and the closure came after as many as nine infants died from contaminated formula. That's how this started, contaminated formula. Now we can and we should get to the bottom of the abject failures that led to contaminated formula hitting the shelves. I've been working on this for months, many months before uh, this crisis came to a head. But we can't forget our top priority here when it comes to protecting infants. We've got to keep our nation's most vulnerable uh, these infants safe. And it's pretty clear that the Food and Drug Administration bears responsibility for dropping the ball in so many ways in terms of inspections, uh, but still, even despite that failure, the FDA standards are the best in the world. And as I mentioned, the Agriculture and Health Committee have, has already done bipartisan work and I think when you look at the, you saw the, the hearings that took place, especially in the Health Education Labor Pensions Committee, bipartisan condemnation of the Food and Drug Administration, bipartisan calls for accountability at the Food and Drug Administration. And they should be hit very hard in terms of the accountability that should be imposed and must be imposed on the FDA. Unfortunately, this bill will completely disregard the FDA standards for safety, which would put our children at risk. I'd also mention the HELP Committee's work uh, marking up a bill last week, an FDA bill, amendments allowing importation during a shortage with appropriate guardrails to ensure formula is safe for our nation's infants. These bipartisan amendments represent a more appropriate path forward than this approach today, to limit the, the FDA's ability uh, to protect our, our, our infants. 
Now is not the time to completely abandon safety standards. We need to do everything we can to get formula back on shelves, but we can't compromise safety at any cost. Here's just some examples. Go to the FDA's website under the Food and Drug Administration Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition. Here's what, um, just a few examples from their database. Uh, July 2016, four-week-old baby uh, in the U.S. was fed a stage one infant milk product approved in nearly all of the countries described in the Senator's bill, but not in the U.S. After consuming that formula, the baby experienced diarrhea, fever, vomiting, and lethargy. The baby ended up in an emergency room where he's diagnosed with salmonella infection. Second example, January 2017, one month old baby, similarly poisoned by a product approved by the countries in this bill, but not legally marketed in the US, and that baby began vomiting. January 2019, a five month old began experiencing upper abdominal pain, diarrhea, after consuming another such product. That's just a, a, a small example. These concerns are why the American Academy of Pediatricians, the American Academy of Pediatrics, for years has warned against importing formula from Europe. The Academy has published articles highlighting the dangers of buying imported baby formulas and advising against doing so. So despite all this, uh, the, 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 the Senator and others want to go forward with, with this bill. Here's the good news, the only good news in the short run. Here's the good news. We don't have to compromise safety standards to increase the supply. We already know that the administration's Operation Fly formula is bringing formula into the United States at a pretty rapid clip. 32 flights, 19 million eight ounce bottle equivalents of, of formula. That's not the end of it. The FDA right now is using enforcement discretion to allow the importation of additional select formula uh, through national, uh, through normal distribution channels, bolstering the domestic supply of safe and nutritious formula by over 220 million eight ounce bottle equivalents. Add the two of them together, you almost have, have almost 240 million uh, bottles that are gonna be, uh, and already, many of which have already been imported uh, safely. The administration is also taking other steps to increase formula production domestically by invoking the Defense Production Act to prioritize critical ingredients and manufacturing supplies for infant formula production. So steps are being taken, but we cannot, uh, when we're invoking these, the powers of the executive branch or enacting legislation, we cannot compromise on safety. We have to have the, the highest safety standards in the world, which we do, and we've got to main, make sure that we adhere to those safety standards. So I object. Mr. The objection President? is heard. Senator from Utah. Mr. President, I, I appreciate the insights, the always uh, thoughtful counsel of my distinguished friend and colleague, the Senator from Pennsylvania. I always enjoy working with him. He's a, a voice of, of reason and, uh, and a delight to work with. I, uh, I, I do feel compelled to respond to a, a few of his points. Um, now, yes, it's true. There are ambitious plans to fly formula over. They use the Defense Production Act to do that, to have government to act. And the ambition, uh, ambitious plans that he describes uh, have yet to materialize. What we have to look at is the bottles that are available now, that have been flown over now, that are here now as a result of that program. It's about 13 million bottles. You know what the average daily consumption of formula is in America? Nine million. So th this buys us a day and a half of formula. A day and a half. And it's, it's still not plug in the problem. So that's, that's not a solution. As to the objection related to the FDA regs, he points to the safety concerns and highlights a few adverse incident reports, not necessarily linked to the formula itself, but things that people experienced as they were switching formulas. A lot of the symptoms that he described, all of them in fact, as I understand, including lethargy, diarrhea, uh, and some of those have been linked to babies switching formula. So yes, when a baby switches formula, whether it's from one American brand to another or from an American brand to a European brand, it's not uncommon during this transition period for babies to react that way. Now, I wish, we wish, that it weren't necessary for them to switch to begin with. This was unnecessary to make them switch. And in fact, uh, an, another point that I need to refute, he made at the outset, uh, about formula being responsible uh, for the contamination. 
for a foodborne illness. It was, in fact, not the formula itself that caused that. In fact, an FDA investigation revealed that it wasn't the formula. It was a, a source of bottled water that had itself been contaminated. And it was that bottled water that the parents were mixing with the formula that turned out to be contaminated by no fault of their own, but also by no fault of the manufacturer. So we, we got to keep straight exactly what happened here and what didn't happen. Finally, with regard to the safety risks, I, I understand this, and it's important that we, we be safe in doing this. We have to remember these are countries from which we currently import pharmaceutical products because we trust that their equivalent of the FDA is safe and is effective. So if we don't trust them with respect to baby formula, I would submit that we should trust them elsewhere. But in, in fact, we can trust them in these areas. None of those adverse incident reports he reported to, to my knowledge, have been linked to a defect or a contamination in the formula itself. Finally, it's important to remember that we have a massive health crisis faced by these babies who are unable to get formula, children being hospitalized because they're dehydrated. These can have lasting consequences. They're occurring at a time when, feed, when, when the baby's brain development uh, is on a, a, a very critical timeline. You don't want to interrupt that. Uh, because You don't want a supply chain disruption to lead to a disruption in the baby's developmental growth. And so it's unfortunate uh, that, that my friend and distinguished colleague, the senator from Pennsylvania, has, has objected to this very reasonable, rational, sensible response that lifts the government, government's impediments. I, I wish this were not the case because this would deliver meaningful reform. Unlike the 13 million bottles, the day and a half worth of formula that's been brought over to date through the Defense Production Act efforts that he described, this would actually solve the problem. And it would solve it for at least six months, long enough for our domestic production capabilities to resume. So it's unfortunate. I wish that were not the case. But I tell you what, in the spirit of comedy uh, and compromise, I, 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 I'll modify my request. Again, the Formula Act um, would have included th these, these three legs a regulatory component, lifting the regulatory restrictions, an import tariff restriction, and, uh, and, and, uh, and also lifting some restrictions in the WIC program. Uh, and so I'm going to counter offer with a, another amendment that would remove the waiver of the FDA re regulations for the imported formula. That, after all, is the concern he expressed, and so that should allow us to deal with it. It would keep the tariff and the WIC waivers from the Formula Act intact, and therefore shouldn't raise any concerns not addressed by my friend and distinguished colleague. And so, uh, Mr. President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of calendar number 372S4261. Further, I ask that the least substitute amendment at the desk be considered and agreed to, that the bill as amended be considered read a third time and passed, and that the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Mr. President? Senator from Pennsylvania. Mr. President, I object. Let me walk through why. My friend from Utah, uh, in, in a spirit to try to work something out here, is offering um, a counterproposal. The problem that, that I have with this is the amendment, now we're talking about the Department of Agriculture, um, which plays a role here. And I'll get to that in a moment. But in this case, the amendment would direct this agency, the Department of Agriculture, to allow formula to be included in the Women, Infants, and Children's Nutrition Program that does not meet USDA standards. So now we have a concern that I initially raised about FDA standards. Uh, now we have USDA standards for safety and nutritional adequacy. I'd also add that this amendment is unnecessary because of action that was taken by the leaders of the uh, Committee on Agriculture and Nutrition and Forestry. That committee passed uh, a bipartisan bill, the Access to Baby Formula Act, that the President just signed into law. This already provides the agency, the United States Department of Agriculture, with the discretion it needs to expand the products available to uh, WIC parents and babies. Right now, that's the law. While also continuing to meet those high nutritional needs uh, of the babies. So again, the concern here are standards, 
safety standards uh, for those infants. The objection is heard. Mr. President. Senator from Utah. Mr. President, I find this too unfortunate. Um, uh, I, I wish we could adopt all three of these reforms. Again, we've got uh, regulatory reform, an import tax reform, and a WIC reform. He's now ex expressed objections to the regulatory reform and the WIC reform. So in the spirit of comedy and cooperation and compromise, I'd like to modify again, and uh, I'll take out the WIC uh, restriction, the WIC component of the bill, leaving only the tariff waiver. Uh, that at least would remove some of the uh, some of this protectionist problem that we've got in place that's currently prohibiting people from being able to import this stuff, leaving it available really only to wealthy, well-connected parents who know how to find the stuff and can pay the higher price for it. Uh, this would at least allow people to buy it in stores if we could lift that restriction and do so in larger quantities while adhering to the labeling and other regulatory requirements. And so, Mr. President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of calendar number 372S4261. Further, I ask that the Lee substitute amendment at the desk be considered and agreed to, that the bill as amended be considered read a third time and passed, and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Mr. President. Senator Pennsylvania. I object. In this case, um, on a much more limited ground, here's the reason. Um, the Senator from Utah is trying to work something out here, and we appreciate that. The Democratic side has not had the opportunity yet to review these, this amendment, so we, we would seek, in the, in the interest of comedy, more time to review it. On that basis, I object. The objection is heard. Mr. President. Senator from Utah. I find it most unfortunate that as American babies are starving and are literally being admitted into hospitals for dehydration and malnutrition because of a government-created problem, we can't get to a solution here. I'm determined to find one, and I'm determined not to take no for an answer. We've got to get to yes on that. And so to that end, I'd like to modify my last request, shorten it down from 180 days, uh, a six-month suspension, down to a 90, or, or uh, down from 180 days to a 90-day suspension. This is the exact time frame that mirrors the Biden administration's proposed time window for gas tax alleviation. Now, the president has raised this, has asked, asked us to act on that immediately. Look, I happen to think baby formula is a whole lot more important and urgent than gasoline. So we can at least do this. And so I, I'm going to modify my request to move it down to just 90 days. We should be able to do that for 90 days. I'm certain that we can. And so, Mr. President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of calendar number 372 S4261. Further, that the least substitute amendment at the desk be considered and agreed to, that the bill as amended be considered read a third time and passed, and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Mr. President. Senator of Pennsylvania. I object, and for the same narrow reason, uh, that is that the Democratic side has not had the opportunity to review this amendment. We will do that on, on, on both of the, the, this amendment and the prior amendment and see where we are. On that basis, I object. But I also add for the, for the record on the, 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 um, the debate overall, I think my, my friend is uh, expressing a, a real concern that both sides have. It's not as if we just arrived here today to start talking about this issue. As I said, for months now, the Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, in a bipartisan way, and the, the Committee on Agriculture and, and Nutrition, in a bipartisan way, has been working on these issues. And so to suggest that somehow that the debate just started today and uh, neither side is doing enough, I think is not, is not accurate. Both sides are concerned about this. Both houses, both parties, very concerned about it. And it's a real crisis. The FDA should be held accountable, should, as I said earlier, be hit hard for this. But we can't compromise safety standards. And that's the reason for my objection. Mr. The objection is heard. Senator from Utah. Mr. President, I, I appreciate um, the, uh, the thoughts expressed by my friend and distinguished colleague, the Senator from Pennsylvania. And I, I, I share this concerned, this desire to see this worked out and worked out on a bipartisan basis. I think it is important. Um, 
it is true that people have been working on it. They've been working on it now for the better part of um, a month and a half, and yet nothing has happened. Now, I understand Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, significant legislative reforms are, are not usually enacted very quickly. Uh, well, they are in some places, and we're experiencing some of that this week. That's a different issue altogether. But I, I understand that it takes time on many occasions to develop a legislative solution. This is not one of those issues. This is just not that complicated. So I, 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 I appreciate the fact that people are considering it. I appreciate the fact that my friend and colleague, the senator from Pennsylvania, is willing to try to, to clear this on the Democratic side. And I hope and expect that one of the four alternatives that I propose today, each in the spirit of comedy and compromise, uh, something that should be acceptable to both political parties, has got to get there. There, there are issues on which we're always going to struggle to find a solution. This one isn't hard. We can do this. We can fix this. American babies are going hungry because of mismanagement within our country. And, and yeah, I, I share your belief that we've got to hold the FDA accountable, but I feel like we're uh, in the same position as the unarmed English Bobby with the FDA lately. Who, the unarmed English Bobby, who being unarmed upon seeing the commission of a crime, shouts in his charming British accent, stop, or I will yell stop again. We, we need to actually do something to force this issue because people are going hungry. Babies are going hungry and there are dire long lasting consequences. I hope and expect that we will solve this before the end of the week. This issue is not going away and neither am I. Thank you, Mr. President.